Hey everyone, Jason here and welcome to the Abyss Garage. And we are working on the Shovelhead project today. Now, last time working on this bike, I made a complete and utter mess of my workstation, shaving foam on the seat pan itself. And now that that task is complete, I can finally get to work on the handlebar setup for this bike. Now, if anyone has been following along since the beginning of the build, this bike originally had a 41 millimeter uh, wide glide style front end on the bike along with short risers and very tall ape hangers. Now, honestly, the way the bike was originally, it was a good look, and I can even see building a bike like that in the future. Uh, however, again, being that this bike is going for a, uh, a narrow look, uh, just from the tire setup and tank, I wanna keep everything narrow. So went with the narrow glide front end on there, and the handlebars are gonna play a key part in that too. Uh, handlebars can stick out like a sore thumb if they're not done right. So uh, I actually sourced a set of used uh, T-bars, really short rise, uh, from my local shop. I saw them sitting on the floor and they were really cheap. I want to say $10 I think I paid, but that sounds too cheap. So it might have been 20 but I think it was 10 uh, I'm going to hopefully make a set of risers for this and uh, get everything attached. And uh, if everything goes well, I'll end up chopping them and making them narrow uh, to fit the build itself. So let's get to it. All right, so before we actually get into it, let me just show you guys. These are the risers that came on the bike. Now, um, they don't look terrible, but they are kind of beefy for what I'm going for. And these are just a set of drag bars that I had on my FXR previously. And uh, I had put these on just to get the bike running with a throttle cable set up. So that's why the apes over are sitting over there rather. Now, these are the bars that I picked up at the shop for cheap and uh, they look pretty nice. They have these bungs already welded onto the handlebar. So I could either cut these off and uh, just run a riser itself, a conventional riser, but they're pretty expensive. I'm trying to do this uh, cost effectively and uh, with obviously safety in mind. But uh, I picked up a six inch long uh, round stock, if you'll say, and I'm gonna, these are, this is actually oversized. So the idea is to turn this down in the lathe and then drill that out. And uh, you know, that way I can have my own set of risers uh, simply and uh, you know, just trying to keep everything simple here. So I don't think time-lapse really does this justice. Uh, this took me quite some time. Obviously you gotta do a pair of them, but uh, turning this down, and the thing I didn't explain here in any of the clips is that uh, I'm not able to uh, obviously get a complete six inch uh, length turned down. So what I ended up having to do is uh, get the correct uh, outer diameter size, which was one inch, uh, say do approximately three inches or well, three and a half, four inches on one side, and then uh, take it out of the chuck itself, flip it around, and then do the remaining piece uh, portion uh, so that way I could have both sides turned down uh, the same amount and uh, I at the time now I have a live tailstock because um, obviously when you start sticking so far out on the uh, chuck itself you know you can have a, t a tendency rather to uh, get deflection all right so that took longer than I thought I am not a lathe expert uh, I will tell you that uh, all day long uh, but this is turned down. Uh, it could be a little bit better, but uh, you know, I don't want to sit here and focus on trying to get that super smooth right now. Uh, it looks pretty good, uh, and that's in comparison and size difference from where we started. Uh, in hindsight, I probably should have got a uh, smaller diameter and uh, just simply, uh, in a sense, like faced it, you know, just cleaned it up to make sure it's uh, straight. Um, that's what you get. I was watching videos on YouTube. And uh, seeing that you should always start out with a larger piece and turn it down, uh, being that this is obviously a longer uh, piece before they cut it, so it could be bent or warped in some sort of shape or form. So that's why I went with the larger piece and, and turned it down. Uh, next thing will be to drill this out and uh, hopefully get one riser complete, and then that way I can focus on the second one. And now here comes the drilling process. This was a uh, tedious part of the build and um, end up destroying pretty much a brand new set of drill bits, but uh, it's probably because they were inexpensive and not good quality. 
But uh, new set of drill bits and we're back in business here. Now one of the things is that obviously I can't drill straight through to the other side. So not only am I having to work up the uh, diameter of the drill bit, uh, I had to get like say more than halfway through and then flip it around in the chuck with the riser itself and drill from the other side. So these are polyurethane bushings I'm putting into this uh, triple tree setup. Uh, I had these in originally on my FXR for like a minute and uh, decided to go with a solid mount setup. And uh, so I have these left over. So I figure I'd rather put brand new polys in, uh, you know, rather than just put the, leave those old shot ones in there for the time being. Uh, if I have to change over to a solid setup, uh, either I'll make a set or I'll just buy a set and uh, go from there, but uh, we'll see how this works. All right, so those are on and uh, definitely going for the look. Now uh, I'll sit on this, see how it feels. Obviously I can't change anything since it's in a fixed position. But I will say, as I mentioned earlier, the spike is narrow and those bars are kind of wide. So we're gonna uh, take some off on either side and get her to how, how we want them. All right, so I don't know where my pipe cutter is. Uh, probably hidden somewhere. And uh, <laughs> coping saw is not gonna work, so I think what I'm gonna have to do is go the inaccurate way and use the right angle grinder, which isn't, I guess, too big of a deal. But uh, I ended up finding I had an extra bearing cup chilling in one of the bins, so it happens to fit over. So to make try and make this as uh, nice as possible, I'll just simply use this as a guide to get a straight line. And uh, so now the chopping will begin. Hopefully I don't screw this up because uh, there's only one set of bars and I can't go back and get another set. All right, so here we are. End of another video on the shovel head chopper build. Handlebars and risers are now done. And uh, it just goes to show you when you're looking forward to something because you're thinking it's gonna be fun and easy, it doesn't necessarily always turn out to be that way. And uh, those risers uh, were just that for me. I'm not a machinist. And uh, the only way of uh, actually learning is by doing uh, the way I look at it. So. Uh, Mission accomplished here, and you guys might want to check out these videos here. You might be interested in them. Until then, guys, take care, and I'll see you around for another episode in the Abyss Garage.